Grace and peace to you. Welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. Wherever you are at the moment, we are grateful that you've landed here to worship with us. Please join me in the call to worship. We have entered the season of Lent, a time to examine our hearts and our lives. And journey, and journey with Christ through, through the suffering, suffering of the world. Let us lift up our souls to our merciful God and, and humble, humble ourselves in God's service. God has marked us as beloved dust and, and called, called us together, together to, to worship. worship. Knowing that we worship a God who is full of grace and mercy, let us go before God and each other with our prayer of confession. And followed after our prayer of confession, we'll have a time for silent meditation and then our assurance of pardon. Let us pray. Holy God, in the season of Lent, we say lofty words about renewing our spiritual disciplines, journeying with you to the cross, and denying ourselves material wants for the good of the soul. Forgive us if we are concerned more with the good of the soul than the good of your people. Forgive us if we are so preoccupied with the sins of the world that we cannot recognize and confess the sins of our own lives. Forgive us, O God, and wash us in your mercy. Forgive us, O God, and free us to try again. Listen, the time has come at last. Look, now is the day of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This is the first Sunday in the season of Lent, and Lent is a time leading up to Easter. And during Lent, you might have friends who give things up. So you might give up something that's not good for you, like soda, or you might give up ice cream. And in place of the ice cream and the soda, you might start eating more healthy food. So you might eat more carrots, or you might eat more bananas. Everybody loves bananas. Well, I like to add something to my life during Lent. 
So I like to do something extra during the Lenten season. And what I might do this year is I'm going to try and do something nice for someone else every single day during Lent. So I'm going to think of something, I'm gonna carry a journal with me and I'm gonna write something down that I wanna do for someone else. So what are some things that you could do for other people during the season of Lent? Well, you could say hello to someone that you don't know when you're out at the grocery store with your mom. You could make a card for someone or maybe write a note and send it off in the mail. You could help more around your house. That would always make your parents happy. Or you could give your family more hugs and just make that what you do for Lent. God gave us the gift of forgiveness through his son Jesus. And our gift to God can be talking to him more in prayer and caring for our friends and neighbors, giving them more kindness and love. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the season of Lent that gives us time to think about you. Help us to find a way to add one good thing that we can do to show your love every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me for our unison prayer for illumination. Merciful God, your word is our way of truth and life. Create in us hearts that are clean and put your Holy Spirit within us so that we may receive your grace and declare your praise forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the dom domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is here on this earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. A voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This sermon's title is the blessing of wilderness. This pandemic time has been a wilderness experience and we're not out of the wilderness quite yet, but we can see the landscape shifting. We're not out of the wilderness quite yet, but we can see the hilltops of the promised land on the other side. And I'm not saying that this pandemic has been a blessing. I'm saying that there are truths to be learned in this wilderness time if we are open to God's spirit. What is God teaching us in this wilderness time? How have we come to see God's world in a new way? I know that God has shifted my sense of place and purpose in this world during the pandemic. I wouldn't be here otherwise. 
And I wonder if that's true for some of you as well. In Genesis 9, God's first covenant is not only with the Noah family, God also makes covenant with every animal that came out of the ark, the birds, the domestic animals, every living creature, every living creature. I think we've paid a lot more attention to every living creature during this pandemic time. I live in Princeton and we have witnessed a plethora of foxes this year. It can be fox, it can be foxes, either one. Did you know that a group of fox is called a skulk? S-K-U-L-K. -K. So last spring at the beginning of lockdown, foxes took over Princeton. They would loll around in a pack on the sidewalks. They would trot down the center of the main street. One of them went running with my husband. He never knew it, but he was running with a fox. They cross the street at the crosswalk, sometimes with the light, which is kind of scary when you think about that. They have a lot of swagger, the foxes. It's their town and we're all just living in it. When we were in North Carolina last year for a big part of 2020, I started watching birds. And when we've been back up here in New Jersey, we've been bird watching. I never watched birds before. I never had time to observe birds before the lockdown. In this pandemic time, we've had time to attend to the world, to the natural world, the world with which God made covenant after the flood. The fate of the natural world is intertwined with our fate, of course. And we've noticed during these pandemic times that it doesn't take very long for nature to rewild. If you weren't gardening last year because of the pandemic, it's all overgrown now. And as it turns out that we human beings are not quite the overlords of the world that we thought we were, and this is a profound pandemic lesson. This virus has awakened us to our own mortality. It has laid bare the fragility of our social constructs. It has taught us with vivid clarity that those with more resources for healthcare have better virus outcomes. This too is a profound pandemic learning. We've had to learn how to sit, how to be still, how to be patient in this wilderness time. We've had to learn to wait. As farmers rotate their fields and then let a field rest, they let that field lie fallow. We have been lying fallow this year in a pandemic-enforced wintering, a kind of wintering. Catherine May uses that term wintering in her book that is entitled Wintering, Wintering, the Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. And although her book is shaped around the individual's experience of wintering, her words in this book resonate for our collective pandemic experience. In my head, her notion of wintering and the biblical metaphors of wilderness experience have kind of meshed together. They've meshed together for me. She writes this, there are gaps. There are gaps in the mesh of the everyday world. And sometimes they open up and you fall right through them into somewhere else. Somewhere else runs at a different pace to the here and now. Those words describe exactly what it felt like last March when we went into lockdown. We fell through this world into some, somewhere else. She writes, winter is a season in the cold. It is a fallow period in life when you're cut off from the world feeling rejected, sidelined, blocked. 
Wintering, however, brings about some of the most profound and insightful moments of human experience. Wisdom resides in those who have wintered. And so we have a lot of wisdom. We have wintered a long time. We've been wintering during this pandemic season. In the biblical metaphor, we are still wandering in the wilderness, but we can begin to see the mountains and what might be on the other side. We will get to cross over the Jordan River. We can see that there'll be a way to cross to a new life. The vaccines have brought us hope, more hope than we've had in a long time, but we are not out of the wilderness. There are many masks yet to wear. We must be vigilant for months to come. As we begin to see some potential warming ahead from this wintering time, we are called to reflect on this fallow time. How has the Spirit changed us during this time of wintering? How are our lives different? What is God calling us into in the future? What is being born in this wilderness, in this wintering time? There is wintering in both of today's lessons. The Noah family and the animals have survived a global flood and the floods are receding and God is ready to reboot life on earth. God promises never to flood the earth again so that all the creatures of the earth can flourish. God is going to put the sign of the bow in the clouds to serve as a sort of divine post-it note. <laughs> the text tells us when the bow is in the clouds, God says, I will see it and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And yes, we are once again in Mark 1. And as Jesus is being baptized by John, the Spirit descends upon him as a dove would descend down. The Greek here actually suggests that the Spirit entered into Jesus. And the voice from heaven speaks directly to Jesus. Only Jesus hears this saying, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. That's what well pleased meant for Jesus. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tested by Satan. That's the better in this in this case, that's the better translation, tested by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. In scripture, wilderness is generative. Wilderness is where new things are born. It is life-changing, a wilderness experience. God or God's representatives, in this case, the angels, always show up to meet people in the wilderness. People encounter God in the desert, on top of the mountain, in the wild places, in the wilderness. When any of those locations show up in scripture, we know that God will be there. It is in the wilderness. It is in the testing. It is in the struggle. It is in the challenge that God meets us. God does not take away the challenge and the struggle. God meets us there in the wilderness and we are changed. We are changed. In today's lesson from Mark, God's spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness and there he is tended by angels and perhaps by wild animals. Mark is the only gospel writer who puts the animals into this account. And maybe this refers back to the peaceable kingdom in Isaiah 11, where God says, 
There'll be no prey, there'll be no predators, babies will be safe, little children will be safe, and all will be peaceful on the holy mountain. Maybe that's what this refers back to. Jesus' testing in the wilderness prepares him for his ministry. Jesus' testing in the wilderness gives him a human experience of challenge, a human experience. God with us, God like us, God like us. Testing and wilderness and wintering are generative times. They form us, they shape us, they reform us into something new. We have been tested this year as we have not ever been tested before. And if we weren't paying attention before, we know in our bones that life on this earth is short and it is precious. And we don't have time to waste, like Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, we don't have time to waste. We have our souls to put in order. We have whatever wisdom we've accrued to put into practice. We have relationships to repair. People are dying from this disease. If you have a relationship to repair with someone, get on it, right? There is ministry to do, there is work to do. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, it is Lent, repent and believe in the good news. Thanks be to God, amen. All that we have and all that we are belongs to God. We give these gifts with grateful hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now open our hearts and minds in prayer to God. God of our salvation, you made covenant with us and through the ages you kept and renewed your promise, even as we stumbled and fell away. You gave us the sign of the rainbow the descending dove of your spirit and the mark of the waters of baptism to show us your faithfulness and to wrap us in your steadfast love and grace. Thank you for claiming us as a people beloved forever. Thank you for seeing us through the storms of life and for ministering to us when life becomes a wilderness. Because of your great love and care for us, we trust you in our brightest joys and deepest needs. Hear now our prayers for the world. Your creation is our tremendous gift, O God, and we pray for the well-being of the birds of the air, the beasts of the earth, and the fish of the seas. Yet we also remember before you all those people and places suffering from the ravages of nature, whether flooding or drought, ice or snow, or extreme cold. Surround all those without a reliable place to lay their heads with the warmth of your love and provision. Be with those without power and heat. Uplift and support all the first responders and people who continually faithfully serve others in the midst of storms and disasters. We pray for all the peoples of the world as we continue through this wilderness of pandemic. The temptations of this year have been many to give in to despair instead of holding hope in you, to seek comfort in material things or unhealthy habits instead of turning to you, to place our own needs and desires above the safety and well being of our neighbors, to fall away when we could no longer worship and practice our faith in the ways to which we were accustomed. Deliver us, O Lord, and lead us back to your grace. Lead us through this time of trial. Loving God, in life and in death, we belong to you and entrust ourselves to your care. Help us when we are confused, lost, or afraid. Heal us in body and mind, whether wounded, ill, or recovering. Bless those we love who are far from us, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And in the midst of death and grief, 
when we are weary. Comfort us, ease the pain that comes from loss, and pierce the present darkness with the light of your presence. Today, we pray particularly for the Figa family in their grief, for Jeffrey, Sandy, Jimmy, Matthew, Janet, and Lisa as they recover from COVID-19, for Celeste, for Natalie, for Francis, for all struggling with mental illness and thoughts of suicide, and for all those we name before you now. Wrap them in your peace and love, O oh God. We pray all these things with the confidence born of knowing ourselves, your beloved children, and in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>